Hi everyone, it's Baldrick here and welcome to my Getting Into PC Gaming series. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about CPUs. So that's the central processing unit of a computer, which does all the main calculations. But I won't talk about that, I'll talk about how it affects your gaming. So that's really what this series is about and that's why I'm going to be talking about CPUs affecting gaming performance. So let's get into what types of CPU brands are you going to be considering. So we've got only two unfortunately and that is Intel and AMD. Anyway, let's get into the juicy bits of the video. So a lot of people are going to say get our dual core processor, it performs fine in games. That is true, but unfortunately games now aren't as optimized. So that's why I really do not recommend getting a dual core processor if you're not really sure. That is, uh, that is a processor from the Intel side that is a i3 or a Pentium or just a really old processor. So don't really be looking to get these dual core processors. If you've got one, that's fine. You'll play games really well. But if you're going to get a new system, I really don't recommend getting a dual core for gaming. For doing general usage, dual cores are perfect because a lot of things are optimized for dual cores. But in terms of gaming, the ports are getting a lot worse as time goes on and people aren't optimizing for dual cores anymore, which is sad, but... That's really the reality and I wouldn't recommend getting one if you want the best gaming experience. So the minimum I would say to get is a quad core. So you can go for the AMD quad cores, they're fine. And then what I would recommend if you want a really top system that's not going to bottleneck your graphics card at all, or the dual cores don't bottleneck your graphics card, but that won't give you any hassle at all is the i5 and i7 processors. I am running an i5 myself and I'm fairly happy with it. I would like an i7 just because of video rendering, but in terms of gaming, it performs really well and I'm really satisfied with it. So there may be a bit of bias towards Intel, but I personally like AMD just as much and I would probably swap my Intel chip out for an 8350 if I got an opportunity anyway, just because it's a better processor. Anyway, let's talk about the i5 and i7 processors. So the main difference in gaming is actually not much at all. You, there's actually no benefit to even getting an i7 in terms of gaming, but I'll leave that to later. So if you're just getting the standard i5 or i7, you're not really going to see a difference. It's only in video rendering that it really makes a difference, and that's because the i7s have hyper-threading and the i5s don't have hyper-threading. So what that means is that the i5's got four cores and four threads, and the i7's got four cores and eight threads. This is for a quad-core i5 and i7. It may change in the future as they'll probably be chucking more cores onto these chips. But for now, that's how it is, and the hyper-threading currently doesn't make any difference for gaming. And that's also another difference between the Pentium and i3 processors. The i3 actually does have hyper-threading, and the Pentium doesn't have hyper-threading, so that's what makes them different. Anyway, uh, that's really why the reason I would say do not get the dual core is just because of optimizations and it is bullshit that they do this to us PC gamers, but some games are actually putting restrictions on how many cores you have to have to run the game. So if you've got a dual core or less, they will actually not let you run the game. This isn't for many games, it's only a select few, but it would definitely ruin your gaming experience if you just bought a new PC and you can't even run the latest game. So that's why I would recommend getting a quad core. The only exception to getting a dual core would to be, I guess you really are on a massive, but not a massive budget, a really low budget, and you just can't get any other component and you really want a PC now, so you buy the dual core and you have plans to upgrade it very soon. That's the really only justification I can come up with for getting a dual core when it comes to getting a gaming PC. So. That's really about it for what you should be considering, but if you want to go SLI, then you have to get a beefier processor than the standard i5 or i7. If you're only doing uh, dual SLI, which is what I would recommend, the i5 and i7 is going to be fine. But when it gets into freeway SLI, that's when PCI bandwidth actually starts running out and you need a more beefy processor. So processors 
but it on the Intel Extreme Edition like the 5960X which have 8 cores and it's just a beast of a processor. These have tons of PCI Express lanes and can handle multiple graphics cards from one graphics card all the way to four graphics cards at really good bandwidths. So that's why I would recommend getting a really high-end Intel processor if you want to do ridiculous amounts of SLI but if you really want you could do freeway SLI on a normal i7 but I would recommend getting the extreme edition motherboard and processor if you're going to do that or not the extreme you can get the enthusiast editions which are six cores and above so yeah that's what I would recommend if you're doing multiple card SLI otherwise it's really not going to make a difference getting a 5960x and a 980 or comparing it to an i5 it will only really matter when it comes to rendering out videos so when you look at the chart showing the fps difference between the highest end processor and an average quad core there is a teeny bit of a difference and that's just because the card's usually running at a better clock speed it's making more use of more cores but it's really not worth paying a thousand dollars for a CPU when you're only going to gain a teeny bit more FPS in some games. And there's another thing to consider if you're doing, once again, as I said, if you're doing really high end stuff with multiple cards, then definitely get the Extreme Edition processors, as for 4K gaming, you're definitely going to need some pretty beefy CPU power. But then again, most of the load goes to the graphics card. So the CPUs just sort of sits there and processes little things compared to the graphics card. Anyway, that's really all I've got to say. I'm not the biggest expert on how CPUs work or exactly how they work in gaming, but that's really all you need to know when you're getting your gaming PC's CPU. So then comes the question, should I upgrade my dual core to a quad core? And the answer is I wouldn't really worry about it until you're getting your next gaming PC, because most games are going to be okay on a dual core. But in the future that may change, so that's why I would recommend getting a quad core if you're getting a new PC. But if you're on a dual core, I would only recommend getting a quad core processor if you're running into issues with games you really like or you've got a bottlenecked graphics card just because your CPU's that old or it's just that much of a difference between your CPU and your graphics card. So if you're running an i3 and a 980 Ti, I would highly recommend you don't do that just because there's too much of a price difference and performance difference between the components and they should be about equal in price. A lot of people say get a slightly better graphics card, but in my experience, I think you're a lot better off getting exact same priced and I guess performance orientated components. So say you get an i5 and you get a 970. If you want slightly better CPU, you get an i7 and a 970 as well. You can get an i7 and a 980 Ti. They'll work fine or an i5 and a 980 Ti. Just don't get like a Pentium and a 980 Ti and you should be fine. So I didn't really talk too much about the AMD. I'm sorry about that, but they do have great processors. They've got their FX6300, which is a hexa-core processor, and they've got their FX8350, which will do you just as well as any of the quad-core Intel CPUs for gaming. Maybe a bit less performance, just because not all the cores are optimized, but you should be fine. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions in the comments regarding a CPU upgrade or whether it's bottlenecking your graphics card, which it generally wouldn't, but it can limit what games you play. So, yeah, tell me in the comments below or ask me any questions you want. I'll be very happy to answer it. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Tell me what episode you want to see next. I'll probably do overclocking, so keep that in mind for next getting into PC gaming episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a nice day. See you later.